River Point Camp, let me hear you make some noise for Jesus right now. Oh, man. That's right. Come on now. It's been, a, it's been an amazing time so far in, in God's presence in these moments. And we've been having fun doing all the crafts and all the activities. Uh, but, but what I love the most is when a group of young people come together in a space like this and just give their all to Jesus, pour their heart out, pour their worship out. Uh, and, and all of that, all of that comes to a place or comes from a place, rather, of breakthrough. You're yearning for breakthrough. You're yearning for something to happen. Whether you've been in church all your life or all but three days, I believe that breakthrough is going to happen tonight. I believe that Jesus, by way of his Holy Spirit, is going to transform some lives today. That, that through his Holy Spirit, some people are going to be, are going to be filled and, and, and life will not be the same. And, and today, today we've been leading up to every single moment. And today is where we, we kind of look inward and find out what's been stopping us. And so, and so one of my favorite verses is Hebrews, Hebrews 1035, it's not on the screen, but I just want you to hear this. He says, he says, therefore, do not throw away your confidence. Do not throw away your confidence, which has great reward, which will be greatly rewarded. We come into these moments and we worship confidently because we know God's going to bless us. And we don't do it for that. We do it because he's already blessed us, because he's already been good to us. But the confidence is not in, in the worship. The confidence is not in the songs. The confidence is not in our ability to sing them. No, the confidence is in God and his faithfulness. And I just want to prepare your minds for what God's going to do today so that we can walk in the confidence and know that we're headed straight through breakthrough. If you believe that, just give God a big praise by clapping your hands. I want to read, I want to read to you a portion of scripture and we're going to be camped out in this, in this story. Like I told you yesterday, I love stories and, and pulling out principles and lessons from them. God, God leaves these, these trails of lessons in these stories on how he works because, because God is the same yesterday, today, and, and forever. And he wants to use these same lessons in our lives and kind of get a little peek into this way that Jesus, that God works. And so Joshua chapter 6 is where we are going to be camping out. And in verse 1, it starts off like this. You may be familiar with this story. Now the gates of Jericho were securely barred. That means tr closed because, because of the Israelites, because of the people of God. No one went out and no one came in. Then the Lord said to Joshua, See, I have delivered Jericho into your hands, along with its king and its fighting men. All right, today I want to talk to you guys under this topic for a couple of moments. Break the walls down. Break the walls down. Right there where you are, close your eyes, bow your heads, and pray with me. Jesus, we thank you. We love you. We're so grateful for what you're doing. We ask right now that your spirit be in this place right now and begin to fill our hearts, fill us up today, Jesus. We want your power through your spirit here tonight. Pour it out in Jesus' name we pray. And everybody says amen. I have one closet. Michelle, my wife, has three closets. I have one rack of shoes. Michelle has three rooms of shoes. 
We need a bigger house, not because we want more space and because God's going to bless us with a family. No, no, we need more space because Michelle has a lot of clothes. Michelle has a lot of clothes. And, but it doesn't go, one day does not pass. One day does not go night, nothing, without Michelle saying these words, whether we're going out to dinner with a couple whether we're going to church, whether we're going to get the mail. Nothing, every single time I hear these words from my beautiful wife, I have nothing to wear. <laughs> I have nothing to wear, she says. And then I go and I prove her wrong by going through all three of her closets and say, you have not wore this in Years and she's like, I'm not wearing that. I was like, then why do you still have it? I don't. I have nothing to wear. I, I usually go periodically through my wardrobe about every three months, and I'm like, if I haven't wore this thing in, in four weeks, I'm probably not gonna wear it. So it's it's gone. I donate it. I do something with it. But she keeps everything. She has all these things, but still finds a way to say, I have nothing to wear. I don't know how many of you can relate to that. Can you explain the science behind that terminology and that line of thinking? And I will sit down and prove to you why you're wrong. But <laughs> I have nothing to wear, she says. And isn't it interesting, though, that she has three closets that are full of shoes, full of clothes, full of everything that she could possibly wear for the occasion. And still look at this full closet and say, I have nothing to wear. I have nothing to wear. To wear, and it brings me to why I bring this up because 1 Peter 1 3 gives us a clear description of what you and I have in Jesus. And Peter writes and he says, For we have everything we need for this life and godliness. Everything we will ever need in, for this life and godliness, we have it at our disposal in Christ Jesus. Everything you'll need. Everybody say everything. everything. And yet we have believers, we have young people, old people of all ages in churches looking at this closet, this heavenly closet of everything and still walking around saying, I have no hope. I have no peace. I, I'm just not confident. I can't, I, don't, I, I find it hard to believe that God has my back, that God is going to do this. When his word clearly says you got everything you need. Everything. And it's hard to step into that confidence to know that God is going to supply all of your needs. It's because on the face of it, you don't, it, it doesn't look like it's going to work. But the, con, the, the problem for many of us uh, believers is to live in the confidence of that verse, live in the confidence of that truth, that, that we have a confidence that cannot be moved. You see, we belong to Jesus, and, ev and, and we have been given every spiritual blessing that comes with it. Everything that is his, he's freely given to us. We've been made, we, we have been made a new creation. We, we have been freed indeed in writing. That means nobody could take it away from you. That if We've been saved. We've been forgiven. We've been given the power of the Holy Spirit. And yet we fail to walk in it. And it's all on the confidence to look into this heavenly clause and say, God has provided everything for me. The problem many believers have is that we have a hard time stepping into this confidence, stepping into this truth. We find it difficult at times to believe that we are a new creation because the old is still there. You've been made new and you're like, well, I still have old. We have a hard time believing that we're free because many times we still feel trapped. We still feel the weight of Chains. We have a hard time believing that we are forgiven because we still struggle with the same sins and the same thoughts every single day. You mean to tell me that God is going to forgive me? I don't know. I find that hard to believe that 
We, we, we throw it away. We, we, we many times we stop short of walking into our miracle, of walking into our breakthrough, of walking into this spirit-filled life because we don't feel it. I've been, we say things like, I've been trying to do good. I've been trying to come to church. I've been trying to make it work, and it's just not working for me. I can't get this right. I've been in church for X amount of times. I've been following Jesus, and I'm still struggling with the same things. I can't seem to get right. I, say, I can't seem to get with Jesus. I can't seem to be filled with his spirit, and we struggle with the same issues. We, we're always falling, and we just want to give up. And you see, in this story, we see a, a load of lessons and principles that we can kind of sort through, but there are three reasons, three main points that I see as to why many of us believers who've been given everything we need for this life stop short, why we don't step into breakthrough, why we can't walk in confidence, why it's hard to believe that God is at work in our lives. Three reasons, and it's the same three reasons that these, that the people of Israel, that, that God's nation on this earth we're having a hard time accessing their promised land and why you and I have a hard time accessing the promise of the Holy Spirit in our lives, the promise of a freed life, the promise of a spirit-filled life, the promise of a power-filled life. Three reasons why we fall short. And here's the first one. If you would put the Joshua chapter 6 verses 1 and 2 on the screen. This is how the story starts as we read it. Joshua chapter 1, Joshua chapter 6 verse 1 says, Now Jericho was shut up on the inside and outside because of the people of Israel. No one went out and no one came in. And then the Lord said to Joshua, See, everybody say see. See, I have given you Jericho into your hands and its king and mighty men of valor. Here's the first reason why many of us don't step into confidence while our breakthrough is so far out of our reach. Number one, you can't see it. You can't see it. Tell the person next to you, open your eyes. And if they're sleeping, tell them to open it for real. <laughs> you can't, you can't see it. You see, we read that, that Jericho, this, this city, this city, that was on their way to the promised land, this city that they had to conquer on their way to get to what God wanted them to be. We see that this, this city, Jericho, was shut up from the inside. It, it had constructed big walls. Big walls. No one could go in and no one went out. And as they come up to the wall, they, all the people of Israel see is walls. They don't even see the city. All they see is walls. Walls and, and verse 1 tells us that there's big walls, huge walls blocking the city. You see, the city was not big, but the walls were high. The walls were high, and then and, and the verse describes the walls as such. And then verse 2 says, God talk, told Joshua, he said, you see, I've given you Jericho. I've given you the city. I have given you the city, no problem for me, says God to Joshua. No problem. No problem. But, but I see a problem. I don't know if you see it, but I see a problem. You see, the problem with verse 2 where God says, I have given you Jericho, the problem with verse 2 is verse 1. Because verse 1 says that Jericho was tightly secured and no one went in and no one went out. If no one goes in and no one comes out, how can you, God, then tell me that you've given me the city? Because no one goes in and no one goes out. The problem with verse 1, with verse 2 is verse 1. Because verse 1 says the city was shut up, no one could get in. And all you see is walls. You can't see it. You can't see your breakthrough. You can't see it. Let me ask you this. What? What do you do when what you see doesn't look like what God said? What do you do when what God says is not what you 
see. You see, that's one of the problems we face as believers because we hear Jesus telling us we're free, but we still feel chained. We hear Jesus saying he has healed us, but we still have addictions and struggles. We, we hear Jesus saying he, that we are forgiven, but we struggle with the same sins. What do you do when, God's, when, when what God says doesn't line up with reality? You see, we have a hard, style, hard time stepping into breakthrough, into freedom, into this confidence because we don't see it. We don't see it. We are blocked from seeing our victory, from seeing our freedom, from seeing our promise fulfilled, our confidence. And this is where the test of faith comes in because we are to walk by faith and not by sight. But there is an encouraging part of this passage, and, and, and it took me a while to see it. And I want to show it to you because I think it's so important. You see, it can help us step into breakthrough and step into that confidence and step into the clo- that heavenly closet that God has for us. You see, because the city was well protected, it had walls. No one got in, no one got out. And yet God said to Joshua and his people, I have given you Jericho. I have delivered Jericho into your hands. We see a wall. We see an obstacle. We see something that's preventing us from getting from where we are to where God wants us to be. And yet God speaks to us in that moment, in time, and says, I've already delivered you from that. I've already freed you from that. You see, the, here's what I, the revelation in this verse. It says, God talks God speaks in past tense about problems that you're currently facing. This is why God can call you courageous in a season where you're full of fear. This is why God can call you more than a conqueror even though you're losing the battle because God has already seen into your future, already seen where he's taking you. He said, hey, do, don't worry about this. Walk in the confidence that I've already given to you, the promise that I've made to you because I've already delivered you from all of that. See, I've already delivered it into your Hands. You see, the problem is you might not be able to see your breakthrough, but you can hear the voice of God saying, I have given you the victory. I have given you freedom. You are no longer a slave no more. You see, even if my current situation does not reflect what God has said, I know he is faithful to complete what he started. You can't see it, but just because you can't see it doesn't mean God's not working. They saw the wall, but God said, I've given you the victory. Sometimes you can't see it. You're going to have to see past your own vision. Here's the second one. Second thing that stops us from from walking in breakthrough, from receiving the promise and everything that comes with life and godliness. Number two is you can't feel it. You can't feel it. You see, verse 3 in Joshua says, This is the directions that God has given to Joshua. He says, march around the city, all the men of war going around the city once. Do this for six days. Do this for six days. Now, you would think, help me out out here. We're going to think together. You would think that if God wanted to keep his people motivated on that marching order, he, he, he would show them something. Every single day, right? He would give them like a little bit of incentive to keep marching. What I mean is that if if, if it was me designing this miracle, I would have a piece of the wall fall down every time they walked around. I I would say there's there's one brick. You earned it. (laughs) There's another brick. You earned it. There's another brick. You earned it. You see, but, but the Bible says that they marched the first day. And nothing happened. The Bible says they marched the second day and nothing happened. The Bible says they marched the third day and nothing happened. What do you do when you are being faithful, obedient, and trusting and nothing happens? 
What do you do when you think what you're doing is not working? What do you do when what you're doing, you don't feel it working? You see, you see, many of us don't step into breakthrough. We don't walk in the freedom and the confidence given to us because we don't feel any change in our circumstance. We have faith, but mom is still sick. We, we, we have faith, but I still don't believe much. We, we have faith in God, but I still struggle with the same depression thoughts. I have faith in God, but God still hasn't answered my prayer. I always ask this, why wouldn't God show them that their marching was working? I would march around the wall one time. I want to see at least a brick fall, but nothing. Nothing. Not a single pebble fell from the wall. If you read the whole section, we never read about a rock falling. You see, sometimes we pray and we pray and we pray and we march and we march and we march and nothing happens. But let's be honest for a second. Let's, let's put on our honesty caps. Let's just tell the truth. If every time you prayed, it got answered, would you pray all the time? God, put $100 in my pocket right now. Oh, snap. It's like, no, there's nothing in there. <laughs> but what if there was? Like, if, 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 every, if every time I prayed a prayer and it happened, well, you couldn't stop me from praying. I'll be walking in the light poles just praying all the time. Like, God, let me make this green light. Yes, Jesus, thank you. I'll be praying all the time. If every time I prayed, God answered, you couldn't stop me from praying. But, but, but here's the thing. Here's the test. Here's the challenge. God wants to know that even if nothing happens, will you still pray? That even if the circumstance doesn't change, will you still trust him? That even if it gets even more dire and more tough, will you still trust him? Him. Will you still trust him even though it looks and feels like it's not working? And see, this is the message for tonight, just like we said and reiterated, in that, that just because it looks like nothing's happening, just because it feels like nothing is happening, doesn't mean that God's not working. God has already delivered into your hands your promise. What he is more concerned with now is building a faith, your faith that, and trust that lasts within your heart and deeply depend on him. So here's the, here's, the, here's, the, here's the challenge. Keep marching. Keep praying. Keep believing. Keep persevering. Keep trusting in him. Sometimes we miss our breakthrough because we stop short when we feel like it's not working. But God wants your faith to be connected to him, not your chains, not your addictions, not your sins, not your failures. No, to him. And watch the power that comes through with walking in confidence. So, number one, sometimes we fall short of breakthrough because we can't see it. Number two, sometimes we fall short of breakthrough because we don't feel it. And here's the last one. Sometimes we fall short of breakthrough because we believe deep down we can't do it. We can't do it. You see, what's interesting about this passage, this whole story is, if you keep reading in the story, the, the instructions that Joshua got from God were very detailed, very detailed. That shows me God's a very detailed God. He said, he told, this is him talking to Joshua. He said, this is what I want you to do, Joshua. I want you to take your whole army, all the priests, Bring the horns, bring everything that you own, and I want you and all your people and all the people to march around the city once for six days. Do it once every day, but don't make a sound, don't yell, nothing. Just march and go back home. On the seventh day, Joshua, here's what I want you to do. I want you to bring everything back, and I want you to march around the city seven times on the seventh day, and on the last lap, I want you, the horns, the people, to give a loud shout, and then, everybody say, and then. 
and then the walls will fall down. That's God talking to Joshua. Everybody tracking? Everybody tracking? That's what God told Joshua. Joshua then listening, uh-huh, uh-huh, cool, got it. All squared away, God, we got it. He turns around, goes to the armies, goes to everybody in the, in the town, and he says, all right, I need the horns, I need the priests, and I need everybody, and let's go march. All right, we're marching, we're marching around the walls. Here we go. All right, now what, Joshua? Go home. Okay. <laughs> All right, cool. Can you imagine being a soldier in that army, <laughs> and you come back home <laughs> from your first day of marching, and you go home, and <laughs> your family's there waiting, and they're like, ready? Oh, my God, there's my soldier. How are you, sir? How was going on? We're good. I thought we were going to go to war, but all Joshua asked us to do was march. It was weird. Hopefully tomorrow we can do some damage or something. All right, cool, whatever. Next day, they all line up again, and Joshua says, let's march. Do you know what we're doing, bro? I don't know. He just said march. March. All right, what now, Joshua? Go home. What is, what is, I don't know. He told us to just march again. Third day. All right, please tell me we're doing something different today. All right, everybody grab the horns, grab the priest. Let's go. Man, this is getting annoying. How long is he going to drag this out? All right, what now, Joshua? Go home. For seven days, Joshua only told the people to march. He had all the instructions. He knew what was going to happen. But the people marching didn't know. The, the, the people marching didn't know. And here's, here's where, where our perspective comes into this. You see, because many times, many times we don't know how long this is going to last. Man, this feels like it's lasting forever. When is God going to heal me from this? When is God going to deliver me for this? Man, this is years. What is happening? Is this all God wants me to do, just pray and nothing happens? I can't. And then we finally end up in a place where we say, you know what? I can't do this anymore. And isn't it just like us to say that we don't know when that last lap would be? We don't know when that wall is going to come down. And, and, and wouldn't it be nice in life if we knew when the last lap of whatever season we were in was coming up? Wouldn't it be nice if God told us just two more weeks of that and you'll be done? <laughs> I hate exercise. If you hate, if you love exercise, then I hate you. <laughs> but here's, here's, the, here's the interesting thing, and I'm working on that, by the way. God's working on me. But... But when I used to work out when I was in the military, there, there was this thing that, uh, that my friend would thought, he thought it was cool to do, that we, and, and it wasn't funny in the moment. But when you're doing your reps and your sets, it's like, all right, just give me a few more, a few more. And I'm like, don't say few, give me the number. Like, I need to know how many more are left. And he's like, no, come on, push it out, push it out, come on, give me one more, one more, one more. And I'm like, is it one more or five, you jerk, like, And before I know it, I've done the whole set. When halfway through, I was like, I'm done. I'm, I'm quitting this. I can't do this anymore. And, 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 but wouldn't it be nice if God would like to give us an end date on our struggles, an end date on this depression, an end date on this loneliness, an end date on this temptation? Like, wouldn't it be nice if he said ten more, five left? And this should tell you something about breakthrough, you see, because your breakthrough could be one lap away, and you're already on this, I can't do it. I can't do it. 
Can you imagine how many soldiers showed up on that seventh day and Joshua says, all right, today we're going to march, we're going to march again. And how many of them were like, no, no, listen, I'm a soldier, man. I don't, I, I don't march, I fight. Like, what's, what's going, I'm done. I can't do this anymore. Translation to 2022 and, and in your life and in your situation, I don't know your story. I don't know your circumstance, but God does. And, and maybe you're showing up here today to River Point Camp, and, and, and you hear this preacher saying, come on, let's do one more lap. And you're like, if you knew what my lap was, you wouldn't tell me to do one. If you knew what I was going through, I can't do it anymore. But you could be one Lap away from breakthrough, from your freedom, from your deliverance, from your promise. And see, the truth of the matter is this, that even when I don't see it, it's working. God's working. Even when I don't feel it, it's working. And even when I feel like I can't, he can. He can. Can And the, the truth of the matter is, he already has. He already has. You see, God wants you to know today that your chains have already been broken. Your addictions have already been dealed with. Your sins have already been erased and forgiven. And, some, and the problem is you don't see it, even if it's not obvious, even if you can't feel it. God, have the confidence that God has already handed you the victory in the middle of your defeat and the promise is can you walk in that breakthrough you see today is somebody's lap seven today is somebody's day seven today is somebody's last lap you've been running you've been fighting you've been limping to the finish line holding on to God's promises and this is it this is your breakthrough. This is the moment that God's been lapping you from and saying, just keep going, keep going. It's like the spirit of Nemo in here. Just keep swimming. Just keep going. Keep fighting. Keep pushing because you don't know what I want to do on this side of your lap. Come on. Breakthrough. 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 Verse 20 wraps up the whole thing. It says, when the trumpet sounded, the army shouted, and at the sound of the trumpet, the men gave a loud shout, and the wall collapsed, so everyone charged straight in, and they took the city. The promise that was made all the way in verse 1, all the way in verse 2, came to fruition in verse 20. But in between all of that were 13 laps. One each day for six days and seven on the last day. And here's, here's the truth. Can you run the laps? Can you finish the race? Because what you're racing to is not a finish line per se, but what you're racing through is a breakthrough. What you're racing through is what you're racing to is being filled with the Holy Spirit. What you're racing to is freedom from all of your addictions. And what you're racing to is life and life in abundance. What you're racing to is peace that surpasses all understanding in any situation and every situation. What you're racing to is Jesus. Can you lap? Can you finish? Your race. I'm going to ask everyone to stand up on their feet. Sometimes we fall short of our breakthrough because we don't see it. We don't see it. And, and the challenge is that we've been looking at our situation through our own eyes when God, all God's been wanting to do is have us see it through his. We fall short of our breakthrough because we don't feel it. And God's saying, I don't want you to trust in feelings. I don't want you to trust, I don't want you to have more faith in fear. I want you to have more faith in me. Don't, don't let your feelings lead you. Lead your feelings back to me. Even when you don't feel it, trust that I'm working. And, and we fall short of breakthrough because we don't see it, because we don't feel it. And then we end up on this plane where we say, I can't do this anymore. And we stop. Short when it could be your last lap with every eye closed and every head bowed. I'm going to pray. And what we're praying for today is 
We're praying, we're praying that God gives us the perseverance and the strength to keep marching, to keep going, to chase after him, to, because this, this is, this could be your last lap. This could be the, the breakthrough you've been working towards. This could be the thing that God has been leading you to. This could be the moment where, where you've been pressing in so hard to be filled with the Spirit and, and today is that day. This could be that moment you've been pressing in to be freed from that addiction, freed from that inclination and, and this is your breakthrough. This could be the moment, the day, the lap that you are finally freed from those surrounding and circumstance where they don't control you but you tell them that there's the one in who is in control and his name is Jesus and this could be your last lap and the challenge at your feet today is to run towards it, not away from it. It's to run for it and not stop short because breakthrough is just one lap away. Jesus, we thank you for what you're doing in the hearts of these young people. There are people here who are hungry for you, ready to press in, ready to march, Lord, and they are, they are desperate. They, they want to see you at work in their lives. They want to feel you at work in their lives. And Lord, right now, even though many of them are at a place where they feel like they can't do it, Lord, strength will arise in them to finish that lap and break, bring them to a breakthrough. Bring them to a spirit-filled moment that, they can, that can mark them for the rest of their lives. Don't stop. Keep going. The presence of the Lord is in this place. The Spirit of God is heavy in here, and He wants to begin the work. He, he wants to begin your last lap, and He wants to run it with you. And He's going to be there, and He's ready to fill you, and He's ready to take you to the next level. And then the challenge is to just keep pressing, keep going. Don't Stop. You can do this. Your circumstances are not bigger than God. And he's already given you everything you need for this life in godliness. I'm going to ask all the leaders to come up to the front. And as we run, as, and as we march, and as we begin this last lap, what I want you to see, not with your own eyes, but with your spiritual eyes, what I want you to see is a finish line. And at that finish line is the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is in this place ready to change your life, ready to make you brand new, ready to get rid of the old, and because the new is here, the new has come, ready to break those chains off of you, ready to relieve you from all of that pain, from all of that shame, from all of that sin, from all of those insecurities, from all of those problems, from circumstances that you've been letting control you. He's ready to free you, give you brand new and brand new strength so that you can go back home and keep marching. Jesus is here and through his spirit he's getting ready to empower a generation that keeps marching. We're so thankful, Jesus, for what you're about to do, for what you are doing right now. On a count of three, I'm going to pray and when we say three, I just want you to march. I want you to take that last lap to that finish line and I want you to see, feel, and do what God has already put in you, what God has already destined you to be. Jesus, we're so thankful for what you're going to do. One, Jesus, we're, we're amazed, Lord, by you and all of your goodness. Two, and right now, Lord, your Holy Spirit is going to flood this place, Lord, and help us just keep marching. Three, if that's you, just run, run to your race, run to your lap, take that last lap. Because Jesus is getting ready through his spirit to do something great in your life. This could be your last lap. This could be your last lap. And you don't even know it, but this could be that moment. This could be that moment.